Now in the lesson for introduction to organic chemistry, we learned that there are four families of compounds that we are going to study in detail uh, in the O-level syllabus and they are alkenes, alkenes, alcohols and carboxylic acids. Okay, so we're going to look at each family one at a time and we're going to start with the family of alkenes. Okay, so this lesson will be entirely on the family of compounds um, called alkenes. Now for each family of compound, we are going to focus on three different aspects. Okay, one is the structure and the bonding of the compounds in the family. Okay, next the physical properties meaning the melting point, boiling point, solubility uh, and so on. And lastly, we're going to look at the reactions um, that the compounds in this family can undergo. Right? If you can recall, um, the members of the family will undergo the same type of reactions. Right? That's why they are in the same homologous series. Now for alkenes, uh, we have learned that they do not have any special uh, feature. Alright, so alkenes are hydrocarbons that contain only carbon-carbon single bonds. So there's no carbon-carbon double bond, there's no uh, oxygen in there. It contains only carbon-carbon single bonds uh, and it also contains carbon-hydrogen single bonds. Okay, let's try to um, construct the first four members of the family. Okay, so um, for the first member of the alkane family, we have one carbon atom. Okay, um, since it has only one carbon atom, um, the rest of the compound must be hydrogen, right? Because it's a hydrocarbon. Okay, and the important thing that um, that you have to remember throughout organic chemistry is this: that carbon is in group four. Okay, carbon is in group four, so it can form or rather it needs to form four bonds in order to have a noble gas stable electronic configuration all right so four bonds no more no less all right so carbon can form four bonds all right it has only one carbon atom so the rest must be um, your hydrogen atoms Okay, so the first member of the alkane family has the molecular formula CH4 and it's called methane. All right. Now the second member now has two carb uh, carbon atoms. All right. So these two carbon atoms must be connected together. All right. Now uh, we look at one carbon atom at a time. How many more bonds can each carbon atom form? All right. If you can recall, carbon atoms can form four bonds. So each carbon atom can form only three more bonds. And the three more bonds must be bonded to hydrogens. Okay. So the second member of the alkane family is called ethane. It has the molecular formula C2H6. All right. The third member contains three carbon atoms that are connected together and then um, the rest of the bonds are bonded to hydrogen the carbons at the end um, of the chain all right of the, uh, uh, the the carbons at the side they can form three more bonds the carbon in the middle if you take a look at it it already has two bonds one to each carbon atom so it can only form two more bonds okay so um, for the third member of the alkane family um, it is called propane it has the molecular formula c3 h8 and we'll quickly draw the last member of the alkane or rather the fourth member of the alkane family it contains four carbon atoms connected um, by covalent bonds and then the carbons at the side can form three more bonds the carbons in the middle can form two more bonds and they are bonded to hydrogen atoms 
Okay, so the fourth member of uh, the alkane family is called butane. It has a chemical, f uh, it has a molecular formula of C4H10. Okay, now we have seen the first four members of the alkene family. Now, if I were to ask you a question, the tenth member of the alkene family, can you tell me what is the molecular formula of the tenth member of the alkene family? All right, I can let you know the name is called decane. Okay, can you tell me the molecular formula for decane? Right, I'm going to give you 5 seconds to take a look. Now for those of you who are quick at spotting patterns, all right, you may be able to tell me that it's C10H22. Okay, for those of you who attempted to draw out 10 carbon atoms connected together and fill up the rest with hydrogens, um, good for you. Now I'm going to test you what happens if I have an alkene with 100 Okay, with 100 carbon atoms. All right, what is the molecular formula? That means what is the uh, number of hydrogen atoms. All right, if you want, you can draw out 100 carbon atoms, but uh, otherwise I'm forcing you to spot the pattern between the number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. Okay, take some time. If you want, you can pause the video here and try to figure out the um, pattern between number of hydrogens and number of carbons okay otherwise i'm going to tell you the answer now the answer is 202 now how do i obtain this value if you check the molecular formulas and you check the relation um, between the number of hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms you should be able to see that the number of hydrogen atoms um, is actually two times the number of carbon atoms plus two okay two times the number of carbon atoms plus two all right so if i have a, a one carbon the number of hydrogens will be two times one plus two which is equals to four if i have four carbons the number of hydrogen atoms will be two times four plus two which is equals to ten Okay, so um, the all the members, all the members, uh, in the alkene family, all right, the the molecular formula actually follows a general one, a general formula, and this formula is CnH2n plus two, right, where n takes the value of one, two, three, and so on. Right, so for the um, tough example of 100 carbon atoms just now, um, the number of hydrogens will be 2 times 100 plus 2. So that is how I could tell you straight away that uh, an alkane with 100 carbon atoms would have a formula of C100H202. Okay, so all members of the alkane family, the molecular formula, will follow that of the gen general formula all right so they will have the same general formula now this applies not just to alkanes later we'll see for each family that we look at all the members of the family will have the same general formula now another important thing that um, we need to know about alkanes is this if we look at the structure of an alkane Okay, so for example, butane. Okay, if we look at the structure of butane, you would notice that each carbon atom has already uh, four bonds. Each carbon atom is already bonded to four other atoms. All right, so can we add another bond to any of the carbon atoms? The answer is no. Right, we cannot simply add any more bonds to any of the carbon atoms without first breaking any of the bond in there. All right? So we say that alkenes are saturated. They are coordinatively saturated. Okay? Meaning we cannot add any more bonds 
or we cannot add any more atoms to an alkene okay so as mentioned alkenes one very important feature of alkenes is that it is saturated it contains only carbon carbon single bonds okay and no more atoms can be added to it now this is important because because of the fact that it is saturated um, uh, it will undergo a certain type of reaction that we will see later now let's again revisit the structure of butane now i'm going to draw um, three different diagrams of butane okay and um, i hope you can see whether the diagrams are the same or different okay we'll call this structure a i'm going to draw a structure b and i'm going to draw a third structure structure c okay now i want you to take a good look at the three structures and tell me whether they are the same or are they different okay look at each carbon atom and look at its neighbors okay so um and then try to identify whether each structure is the same or different okay now i'm going to review the answer so if you are not ready yet you can pause the video otherwise um i am going to tell you that structures a and b are the same okay however structure c is different from structures a and b all right first i'm going to point out how structure c is the different one right if you take a look at this carbon atom in the middle okay you will find that this carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms all right if you look at structures a and b none of the carbon atoms are bonded to three other carbon atoms okay at most um, the carbon atoms in the middle are bonded to two other carbon atoms but for structure c for structure c the carbon in the middle is bonded to three other carbon atoms okay another difference i can point out to you if you look at the carbon atoms that i've circled in blue there are three carbon atoms that are bonded to three hydrogen atoms okay so there are in of all of the four carbon atoms three of them are bonded to three hydrogen atoms but if you look at structure a and b uh, you will notice that there are only two carbon atoms that are bonded to three hydrogen atoms okay so from there i can show you i'm hoping that you will see that structure c is different from structure b all right now if you compare a and b now if you look at the um the how each carbon is being bonded you will find that they are actually the same right they are actually the same they have two carbon atoms bonded to three other hydrogen atoms and the carbon atoms in the middle they are bonded to two carbon atoms each and two hydrogen atoms each so they are essentially the same now if you have an uh, analogy of uh, let's say a wire okay this is structure a now all i need to do is to when i bend the wire all right i get structure b so it's essentially the same i'm simply bending the wire i'm not breaking anything all right but in order to get structure c i will need to cut out part of the wire and reattach to the middle that is why c is considered to be a different structure than a and b 
okay so um, in organic compounds you will find that very often there are compounds with the same molecular formula all right so they have the same number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms but they have different structure which we call different structural formulae formulae is the plural of formula all right and for that we call them we give them a special name we call them isomers okay um, we have come across iso before remember iso means uh, same all right so isotopes same number of protons but different number of neutrons isomers same molecular formula but different structure or different structural formulae okay as mentioned um, just now we have seen this is structure a and then this is structure c so they have the same molecular formula they both have four carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms but they have different structure okay so other than the fact that they have different structure we name them differently also so it allows us to know what is the exact um, isomer you are looking that at All right for structure a we have learned that it contains four carbon atoms so it, the front part of the name is but and then it's a uh, an alkene so we call it uh, butane okay for structure c now how do we name an isomer is this um, the key word to rem remember is the to look for the longest continuous chain Okay, what is the longest continuous chain? It's the um, longest number of uh, continuous carbon atom that you can connect without lifting your pen or pencil. Right? For example, this is a continuous chain. All right? Why? Because I can go from this carbon to the last carbon without lifting my pen. Okay, another example of a continuous chain would be this. Right, where I go from the first carbon to the last carbon without lifting my pen. Now, am I able to connect all four carbon atoms together without lifting my pen or without going backwards? Answer is no. Alright, so for structure C, the longest continuous chain is made up of three carbons all right so the main part of the name of the isomer is based on the longest continuous chain all right three carbons um, has the prefix prop the longest continuous chain is an alkane so propane all right but by naming the longest continuous chain uh, it's not complete yet because we have a, a part that is not not name all right we call this part a branch okay so next we need to name the branch right to name the branch we need to look at again the number of carbon atoms in there there's one carbon atom and the the alkane um, or rather the uh, prefix for one carbon atom is meth all right so to indicate that this is a branch we add the um, back part of YL. All right. So this is methyl propane. All right. There's no space between methyl and propane. So the whole, uh, uh, the whole thing is just one word. Okay. So the isomer uh, structure C has the name methyl propane. Okay, so what happens when your branch has more than one carbon atom? All right, so if your branch has one carbon atom, we call it methyl. What happens when your branch has two carbon atoms? We call it ethyl. Three carbon atoms, propyl, and four carbon atoms, butyl. All right, so from here, I hope you can see how do we identify a branch is by the suffix yl okay
Now, the other thing that we need to learn about isomers, other than the definition, is that uh, isomers, they actually have the same chemical properties, meaning they undergo the same type of reactions, but they have different physical properties like boiling point, melting point. All right. So uh, again, when we look at structure A and structure C, butane and methylpropane, uh, you will find that actually they boil at different temperatures. Butane boils at minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, methylpropane at minus 11.7 um, degrees Celsius. So butane has a higher boiling point than methylpropane. So again, um, the other important thing to remember about isomers is that they have the same chemical properties, but they have different physical properties. Okay, so now we are done with looking at the structure uh, and bonding in the family of alkanes. Uh, next, we are going to look at the physical properties, meaning the members of the alkane family, what kind of boiling point, melting points do we expect them to have? Okay, we're going to look at four different uh, physical properties in particular. Melting point, boiling point, solubility, viscosity, and flammability. Alright, I'm going to explain what they are in a while. Now, um, in the introduction, I've already mentioned something also. If we look at an alkene, for example, propane, you will realize that it con is made up of carbon and hydrogen, both of which are non-metal. All right. So, what kind of structure and bonding do we expect to see in alkene? Is that they have simple molecular structures, and if you can recall, for simple molecular structures, you will have weak intermolecular forces between your alkene molecules. Now, since they have weak intermolecular forces, um, it doesn't require a lot of energy to overcome these forces. You can expect um, alkanes to have low melting points and boiling points. And because they have low melting points and boiling points, the first few members of alkanes, you, uh, they, are often, uh, they exist at room temperature as gases. Okay? The other thing that we need to know is as the alkane gets bigger, that means as the number of carbon atoms increases, as the alkanes get bigger, the melting point and the boiling point increases. Okay, so uh, for at the O levels, we don't have to know the exact reason why, but when the size, when the size of a molecule increases, okay, when the size increases, the strength of intermolecular forces will actually increase okay so the bigger the molecule the stronger each molecule will attract another molecule all right uh, for the exact reason we'll learn that in a levels um, where we learn your induced dipole induced dipole interaction and how um, a larger electron cloud can be more easily polarized and the extent of polarization is greater leading to uh, stronger intermolecular forces okay now for solubility again we go back to the structure and bonding um, it has a simple molecular structure so we have learned that um, compounds um, that exist as simple molecules they are insoluble in water okay but they are soluble in organic solvents um, like ethanol now viscosity um, what is viscosity viscosity um, is the resistance to flow okay so um, when we say that something has low viscosity it means that it flows easily Okay, so an example would be maybe water. Okay, when we say that something has high viscosity, uh, it means that it is it flows um, less easily. For example, your honey. Okay, honey is very viscous. 
all right so what do we know about um or what, what do we need to know about viscosity is this that viscosity actually increases as your alkane gets bigger all right n again n represents the n in the um, general formula so as n increases what it means that is that there are more carbon atoms so the molecule becomes bigger so as your alkane becomes bigger the viscosity will increase that is what you need to remember as well all right and the last thing that you need to remember is flammability flammability is how how easy um, it is how easily um, it is for for the compound to be burnt okay or how easy is the uh, for it for the compound to catch fire all right uh, and what we need to learn is this that flammability decreases as n increases so the larger your alkane the harder it is to catch fire now uh, to recap alkanes have low melting point boiling point as the alkane gets larger melting point boiling point will increase okay in general when the size of any molecule increases the melting point boiling point will increase okay uh, alkanes are insoluble in water they are soluble in organic solvents the viscosity will increase meaning it becomes harder to flow as your alkane gets larger the flammability meaning um, how easily it catches fire decreases as your alkane gets bigger so when we have a very very big alkane uh, it will be very hard for it to burn now we're going to look at the last part for alkanes which is the chemical properties meaning the chemical reactions that it can undergo now alkanes can undergo three uh, kinds of reactions combustion substitution and cracking okay for each reaction we're going to focus on three things we're going to focus on the reagents that means what is needed okay so what is needed to react with your alkane what are the conditions required some uh, reactions are very often in in organic chemistry the reactions that the organic compounds undergo require a special set of conditions for example um, this is not in organic chemistry but in the Haber process if you can recall your Haber process you re it requires a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius uh, a pressure of 250 atmosphere and uh, finely divided iron as catalyst these are your reagents and conditions okay um, and then also the products products meaning what is formed after your alkane undergoes this reaction okay so for each reaction we're going to focus on the three things now combustion uh, of any substance is the reaction of the substance with oxygen okay most of the time it produces heat all right there are two types of con uh, combustion complete and incomplete okay complete means that all your um, organic compound is being reacted with oxygen so under what kind of conditions will we uh, have complete combustion is when we have an excess when we have an abundance of oxygen then we will have complete combustion all right uh, the reverse is also true when we have limited amount of oxygen then your organic compound will not undergo uh, will not be fully reacted so we say that is incomplete combustion now what's important to remember is this complete combustion will produce carbon dioxide and water okay incomplete combustion will produce carbon monoxide and water and in very severe cases um, carbon okay which is your soot plus water all right so it's important for you to be able to write the equations to represent uh, complete combustion of 
um, an alkane and incomplete combustion of an alkane. The next reaction um, that alkanes can undergo is related to the fact that it is saturated. Okay, If you recall, we learned that alkanes are coordinatively saturated, meaning um, each carbon atom is already bonded to four other carbon atoms. So there's no way in which we can add another atom to it. The only way is to remove an existing atom. All right. So therefore, alkanes can undergo, can only undergo a type of reaction called substitution. All right. And one particular substitution reaction is when alkane or methane reacts with chlorine in the presence of UV light. All right, so chlorine is your reagent. UV light is your condition. Okay, when methane or any alkane reacts with chlorine, um, what will happen is this. It will substitute one of the hydrogen with one of the chlorine. Substitute, that means they exchange. Okay, and what will happen is that you will form uh, a product where your alkane now contains a chlorine atom all right and your hydrogen atom the original hydrogen atom um, is now paired with the other chlorine atom okay how do we name the product form um, it's still methane it still has uh, one carbon atom uh, but now it has a chlorine atom so we call it chloromethane okay the molecular uh, the chemical equation is shown below now um, very often students will ask then um, but there are so many hydrogen atoms does it matter which one I substitute answer is no all right we cannot know for sure which hydrogens uh, atom is substituted all right so can we substitute the hydrogen atom on top sure you can all right that also leads us to another point after substitution when you have chloromethane there are four there are sorry there are three other hydrogens remaining can they undergo further substitution answer is yes all right so your product can continue um, to undergo the reaction where it will substitute one hydrogen at a time okay so can you see in the next product um, I have two chlorine atoms um, and two hydrogen atoms remaining okay how do we name this we call this dichloromethane okay after getting dichloromethane can it undergo further reaction answer is yes it can undergo another um, substitution to get trichloromethane all right and then after getting trichloromethane can it undergo another substitution yes it can and ultimately it will stop only when we have this okay this is your tetrachloromethane okay and then uh, the more common name that um, we have learned is carbon tetrachloride. Okay, both names are acceptable. It's just um, the different context that we use them in. All right, in, when we are talking about organic chemistry, um, in particular, um, the substitution of methane, uh, the final product we call it tetrachloromethane. All right, but in when we learn bonding, in the naming of covalent compounds, we can call it carbon tetrachloride as well okay so the second reaction that alkanes can undergo is substitution where you have the hydrogen atom being replaced by a chlorine atom one at a time all right so the the key word that i want you to a uh, key phrase that i want you to remember is one at a time so you will never get a case where you substitute both hydrogen atoms at a time and you form a hydrogen molecule right this is not 
correct okay so the substitution will occur between um, uh, an alkane and chlorine molecule all right and then um, the next substitution will occur with another chlorine molecule so that at all times there will not be a case where hydrogen gas is being produced now the last reaction um, for alkanes uh, would be cracking okay what exactly is cracking cracking is the breaking down of large hydrocarbons all right which is your alkanes or large alkanes into smaller hydrocarbons or hydrogen okay so what is actually happening is that you have a very big alkane all right one that contains many many carbon atoms and when you subject the alkane to cracking it will form a shorter chain alkene okay combined with an alkane or hydrogen gas okay so the products of cracking is always there's always alkene combined with either another alkane or with hydrogen gas all right and for cracking um, there are multiple different products that you can get all right so if you break up a, a large alkane there isn't only one way of breaking up all right for example if you have hexane over here okay hexane um, i can break it up to form this is ethene Okay, how do I tell that it's ethene? Um, in the next lesson, we're going to learn the homologous series of alkenes and you will learn that alkenes actually have the general formula CnH2n. So from the general formula C2H4, I can tell that it belongs to the alkene family. All right, so ethene plus butane. This is one way in which I can break up hexane. Alternatively, I can break up hexane to form three ethenes and one hydrogen uh, molecule. All right. So for the same alkane, I can break it up in multiple different ways. How do I know which way you are, you are not required to predict? Okay. So the important thing here is that there are different ways to break up a long alkane. Okay, but the products will always contain an alkene, all right, and the other um, product is either hydrogen gas or um, butane. Oh, sorry, or an alkene. Okay, um, the other important point over here is this: if you can recall, um, hydrogen is an important uh, starting material in one. Um, in the manufacture of something which is your manufacture of nitrogen in the Haber process all right and uh, when we were learning about the Haber process we learned that nitrogen is obtained from the fractional distillation of liquid air okay and then hydrogen is obtained from cracking of fossil fuels or hydrocarbon fuels or crude oil okay so this is what um, it was talking about in the cracking in breaking down um, large hydrocarbons you will produce alkenes and hydrogen gas the hydrogen gas can then be used to manufacture ammonia so um, now that we know what cracking is let's look at the reagent and conditions now the conditions for cracking is this that you need high temperatures all right 600 degrees is just an example it doesn't mean that um, 600 degrees is required to crack all kinds of alkanes and usually we need a catalyst which is aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide now we can actually carry out the cracking um, of alkanes in the lab so what what how do we do it is this that we have a let's say a boiling tube and then which contains a cotton wool that is soaked in your petroleum or crude oil okay and then we're going to heat it 
alright, to about maybe 600 degrees Celsius and then we're going to put some uh, catalyst which is your aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide that is um, that can be found in actually your broken porous pot okay so pots actually contain sand aluminum oxide so all this can be used as a catalyst all right and then a delivery tube and then um, it's going to break down into small alkenes plus hydrogen or small alkene plus an alkene all right so how do we collect these gases is that we can use this method okay i'm not sure whether you can identify what is this method for collecting gases this is your downward displacement of water so why is it that we can use this method or why is it that this method is preferred uh, for collecting the products of cracking again it's because if you can recall the products are small alkenes plus alkenes or hydrogen gas okay all of these gases alkenes alkenes uh, we have just learned the physical properties that they are insoluble in water and hydrogen we learn it in the very first chapter that is also insoluble in water all right so since these gases are insoluble in water we can collect them using your downward displacement of water so whatever um, gas that's here is a mixture of alkenes small alkenes alkenes or hydrogen gas now a common question that we'll get for cracking is this that they will um, ask you to identify the fragment okay that is that is um, missing from the equation and that will just simply require you to remember that during cracking there's no loss or gain of any atoms of any element all right so what do i mean by that um, we started with 18 carbon atoms so at the end of cracking you should also have 18 um, carbon atoms so i they have already highlighted um, one product this uh, C8H16 so that will allow you to know that the other fragment must contain 10 uh, carbon atoms as for hydrogen we started with 38 there is 16 over here there's 2 all right so we know that the fragment contains 20 hydrogen atoms okay so the missing fragment there is c10h20 okay but once again I, like i mentioned there are multiple correct answers you can either write c10h20 or it's perfectly fine if you can if you write it as 5c2h4 all right because if you count it you'll find that the number of carbon atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms is still the same on the left and on the right